Okay, I am Amanda Gross, and I'm going to be showing you today uh, a C++ code that I have written, um, a text-based adventure game. Uh, this is the first text-based text adventure game that I'm going to run and play for you. This one is called Whatever You Do, Don't Upset a Fairy. So, here we go running. Um, I start with uh, asking what the adventurer's name is. So adventurer, what is your name? And I'm going to put down Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Welcome to the Fantasy Tavern. Press any key to continue. All fantasy creatures start out here. I could have started with Once Upon a Time, but I didn't want it to sound cliche. At the bar is a dwarf, an ogre, a mage, a vampire slayer, and two members of the Night's Watch the werewolves are rivals. At a table near the bar, a vampire and a werewolf share a drink that looks suspiciously like blood. Hopefully rat blood. I mean, the Night's Watch and a vampire slayer are sitting right there and two tables over. A zombie is enjoying eating monkey brains. These brains are obvious since he is eating them off of a ripped off monkey's head. Yes, yeah, you can take ripped off in two different ways, but back to the tavern. Not any doomed temples. And if didn't pick up on it. I was referencing uh, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom because um, the chilled monkey brains. An elf archer, a human druid, and a halfling rogue are doing shots near the door. A dragon is sleeping in the corner, smoke rising from his nostrils as he snores. Um, in this one, I've started a, a uh, swap, which is a, a reference. You have a thousand gold pieces jingling around in your pockets, spotting the half when you decide to try increase your gold by a game of cards. So your original value, um, the halfling has 150 and you have 1000. Your score or your cash is a thousand gold pieces. Okay, so we're gonna call a uh, bad swap first. Um, halfling still has 150. I now have, I still have 1000. And then for the good swap, even though you might not say it's a good swap, but it's part of the storyline. <laughs> um, the halfling takes your cash, leaves you with uh, 150 gold pieces. The halfling says, no hard feelings. I hope here is something for your trouble. Okay, and then, uh, so there at the very bottom, um, the halfling had 150 and 1,000 and flipping the money around. Um, the halfling takes your cash, leaving with only 150. Oh, I said no hard feelings already. Uh, halfling pulls out what looks like a small coin purse, and he pulls out an entire treasure chest from the purse. Must be magical. The halfling rogue can easily open the treasure chest. Inside, you find a shiny sword, and it's added to your inventory. Sword. Inside, you also find some fine, lightweight elven armor, and you add that to your inventory. There's your armor. And finally, you find a dwarf made shield, and you add that dwarf shield to your inventory shield. Um, so this was a, a vector. This was a, a pointer vector, um, adding things to your inventory. Uh, finally, oh, you shield. Um, the elf wants your armor and trades you for a healing pill potion. That's still part of the vector. Um, you add the healing potion to your inventory, and you get... The healing potion. He has the thousand gold pieces back to his purse as well. And then he goes back, oh, puts the entire treasure chest back into his purse, adds 1,000 gold pieces to the purse, and then he goes back to his drink. The tavern is a nice, quiet, neutral zone, as demonstrated by your card game. How nice you think that so many enemies are at peace in this quaint, cozy tavern. In flies one tiny... Oh, sorry, nothing could possibly hinder the calm of this neutral zone. In flies one tiny fairy, no bigger than your pinky finger, dressed in an assortment of flowers. She orders a large flask of dwarven meat and asks the tavern keeper to add an umbrella to her drink. The slayer thinks she's too, oh, sorry, whoops, umbrella to her drink. Uh, the dwarf comments that dwarven meat is too strong for a small, whoop, whoops, I, I missed it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. The dwarf comments that dwarven meat is too strong for a small fairy girl. 
He grumbles about the umbrella ruining a perfect drink. The Slayer thinks she's too young for any drink. The Ogre suggests she's too small for any drink. The Vampire and the Werewolf both laugh and agree that all fairies are too small for any drink here. And Momo's entire tavern is making fun of the tiny, innocent-looking, seemingly harmless fairy. And, oh, well, that, for some reason, the rest of the score finally came up. The halfling has 1,000 and you had 150. <laughs> uh, have to correct that later. Uh, let's see. So, these are my choices. And they popped up, too, ahead of time. But enter one uh, to ignore the laughter. Pull your head up over your head and pretend like nothing is happening. Enter two to defend the fairy's honor. Since they're making fun of her, you're going to defend her. Or enter three to join in fun, in the fun of making fun of the fairy. Okay, so first I'm going to enter three. I won't go in order. I'll do three first. Ah, there we go. <laughs> uh, so it popped up red and yellow, which is something I add for effect. The dwarf comments the, oh wait, no, that's all the way up there. Ha, oh, fairy flushes in red in anger. And in an unbelievable display of strength, starts throwing chairs. She hits you in the head with a flying chair, since you were laughing too. And while you are losing consciousness, you see she has awoken the dragon. The fairy flies swiftly away, unharmed, with her meat and her umbrella, no less. But the dragon's flames kill everyone else, including you. Isn't it always the innocent-looking ones that cause the most amount of damage? Is your last thought before death. Okay, so that was the end of the game, and the red and yellow was there as part of the death scene. So I'm going to go in again, and this time choose, I'll choose the one and ignore the laughter, followed by two. Um, and this part, I'm going to just go fast because we've already read it. So I'll go all the way down to where we have our choices. I have a lot there. <laughs> okay, so... I'm going to ignore the fairy laughter this time. Okay. Fairy blushes red in anger and an unbelievable display of strength starts throwing chairs. Fortunately for you, she doesn't throw a chair at you since you did not make fun of her. Unfortunately, she hits the dragon with a chair. Oops. <laughs> you know what they say, let sleeping dragons lie. The dragon lets out a gigantic roar as flames spill out of his gaping maw. The fairy grabs her mead and her tiny umbrella and flies swiftly away unharmed, but everybody else has burns, including you. One to help the others, two to try to run away. Okay, so this time I'm going to pick run away, and then we'll do uh, go back here in a minute, but we'll, we'll run away for now. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and we die again. So the dragon lets out a gigantic roar. Oh, we read that one. Sorry. Um, I'm down here. You try to run away, but the flames of the dragon get you. You don't help the fairy. You don't help anyone else. You are a bit of a chicken. Not Kentucky Fried or a Nugget, just the cowardly kind. While dying in the fire, you can't help but think. It's the innocent looking ones that cause the most amount of trouble. <laughs> the end. Okay. Well, we'll go in again. And we'll ignore it, and this time we'll uh, choose to help the others and see where that gets us. Okay, so I'm going to skip past all of it. Well, gotta, I've got to somewhat play the game up to that point. Okay, so this time we're going to ignore the fairy laughter again. And, and all these are uh, loops inside and nested elements inside each of the things. Okay. So, I'm helping the others. Or not. Yes, yes. Helping, helping the others. Okay. You choose to help the others. I mean, ignoring the problem didn't work too well the first time around, did it? Despite, despite the burns, you're able to help the dwarf, the elf, the druid, and the halfling to safety. Do you go back for the rest? Okay, well, if we help the others and it worked well on this time... Let's try to help the other, help the rest, see if it works well this time. And it does not. <laughs> um, what part of helping a vampire wear with zombie and ogre that are entered in eat blood sounds like a good idea to you? You should have stuck with the other group of adventurers. While you're having your blood removed, you can't help but think. 
It's innocent looking ones that cause the most amount of trouble. Goodbye, Amanda. Better luck next time. Oh, so this one came even with the um with the ending goodbye. And not all of them have an ending goodbye, but some of them I stuck in an ending goodbye. Okay, let's go ahead again and keep going. Maybe next time I'll change my name. Okay, so I'm going all the way down the bottom again. Um, we're going to we're going to ignore still because we we need to go through all the scenarios. All the scenarios are kind of fun. Okay, um, I already helped the others. Uh, run away ends in death, so I've got to help the others the first time. And this time I do not want to go back to the bat rest. I want to stick with this group of adventurers. You choose to stick with this group of adventurers. The wizard in the party heals everyone, including you. I'm sure you'll have a wonderful time adventuring together so that I can continue the storyline at a later date. This is one of the scenarios where... You could actually uh, lick your wounds and continue to play. Now, I'm going to go in and this time do two, where you protect the fairy. It's kind of the one that um, will have the most amount of story the entire time. So here we go. And uh, let's see, go to defend fairy's honor. And then when we defend the fairy's honor, Quite the hero, aren't you? Defending the fairy gets you laughed at by half the bar. <laughs> but in defending the fairy, you get to choose your party. Okay, so for right now, I'm going to uh, choose evil. Because it's uh, that's part of the, the thing that I'm doing for choosing evil. Uh, it doesn't have as much storyline as, as the rest. Okay, so you choose the side of evil or the dark side. Your party consists of an ogre, a vampire, a werewolf, and a human du druid. Or your party can consist of a vampire, a werewolf, a mage, and a zombie. So in this way, you, you, uh, you get to choose your side at this point in the game. And you get to choose your party at this point in the game. You already have uh, some inventory with the weapons that you picked up after you played the card game with the halfling rook. Okay, so let's um, let's go with uh, party two. I'll work backwards. Woo. Okay. The mage turns out to be a necromancer. Good for you. You might be the brunt of several jokes for defending fairies, but it works for you for now. Together you leave the bar eager to find some mischief and uh, attack inflicts 10 points of damage. So you ended up in a fight. I I'm going to fix that later too then. <laughs> okay. Let me go ahead and stick another one in. And, okay, all the way down to, we gotta defend the fairy's honor. And we'll choose evil again. And this time we'll choose party one. Okay, and party one. The ogre, a vampire, a werewolf, and a human druid join you. But what's this? A human druid is completely neutral. That means morale is going to be very low for your group. This might cause trouble for you in the future, I'd rager. An ogre chief says he will fight you. After your fight, your adventure continues. So it's trying to add in um, an inheritance here uh, where they are fighting the ogre chief. It works better on the side of good, though. Okay, so I think that's all the storyline for when you pick evil. Now we're going to go ahead and pick the side of good. we got to go all the way through again. <laughs> okay, we're going to defend the fairy's honor. And this time we're going to, to pick the side of good. And you still get two party choices. So, as I said before, this is part of the story where you get to choose your party. So I'm going to choose this part. I'm going to choose uh, party one. Your party uh, vampire slayer, member of the Night's Watch, a mage, and a halfling rogue join you. But what's this? The little fairy, you defended her honor, and she really wants to join you. I know you didn't pick her. She feels left out. They say not to upset a fairy. This might cause trouble for you in the future, I'd wager. Um, so this scenario, I'm going to try to develop 
into, since you didn't pick her, that it will indeed cause trouble for you. And even the scenario where you um, have uh, you know, left the bar and you, you ignored the situation, but you left the bar and you got burnt <laughs> a bit when you left the bar in the tavern and um, the mage healed you, but you don't end up with the fairy there either. The entire game is don't upset a fairy. So <laughs> you're always trying not to upset this fairy. Um, it might cause trouble for you in the future, I'd wager. You spot an ogre, um, inflicts 10 damage points. After the fight, your adventure continues. Um, so it, and it, uh, 2, 4, 3, 4, uh, becomes the pointer inside the game as well. So each time, um, the ogre can come and fight you as part of an inheritance that I, I made on the story. Uh, let's see. Let's try one more time. Whoops. Oh, sure. I'll have... I'll misspell my name. Why not? <laughs> okay. Gonna defend Fairy Honor one more time. And we're gonna choose the side of good. And um, this time we're gonna uh, do the second party because your party can, this is the only choice where your party consists of the Elf Archer, the Dwarf, the Halfling Grave, the Human Druid, and the Fairy. So this technically is like the right choice for the whole thing so far. So far I've only given you one really that where everything uh, continues and everything's really good to this point. This is the chosen path. <laughs> okay. Um, the Elf Archer, Dwarf, the Halfling Grave. Okay. The fairy says she was kicked out of her home because she just woke up with unbelievable strength one day. She thinks she's not the only one. If all the fairies end up becoming berserker barbarians, they're hot-headed as it is, fairies can send the world into impending doom. Ah, so there, that's the storyline of why you don't want to upset a fairy. Uh, you find the ogre. Um, the ogre attacks and inflicts 10 damage points. And after the fight, your adventure continues. So each time um, I can switch out enemies for different things to fight. Uh, so I'm ending the adventure here today. That is what I have as my running program so far for the text-based uh, fantasy, kind of like a Dungeon Dragons kind of type adventure-based video game. So thank you for watching. I'll go ahead and stop the recording.